Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. My name is DK Diamantes, my co-host is Bricky, and we're going to be learning all sorts of crazy fun facts about Warhammer 40k. But before we do, if you enjoyed today's episode and you want to support your favorite Warhammer 40k podcast, head on over to patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous, where you can get access to the Discord, bloopers if they happen. Uh, there is a $15 tier that gets you all the HD posters, so if you missed any of them, Maybe think about that. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous. Consider supporting us. Uh, and Bricky will tell you about uh, book club and merch. Yes, I will. Uh, so this week, we will be having a new episode of Detective Ridiculous. Uh, due to my sickness, we couldn't film the book club, but we will be filming that next week, so you have a bit more time. It is Belisarius Call, The Great Work. Go ahead and get that read. Also, uh, for merchandise, we have a ton of great stuff. Um, the, the dice have been fully restocked. If you want more Adeptus Ridiculous dice, hit that up. There are a plethora of hoodies, shirts, tons of the little guy merch, both in hoodies and shirt combo as well. We have objective mats for your games to play. There's a ton of merch, and we also have uh, great posters to go along with it as well, uh, with, uh, with varying sizes, too. Uh, also, we will have new merch very, very soon. Um, it's uh, a pretty exciting one that I'll talk about next episode, but uh, I'm, re I'm really hyped for this one. It just came in. I think it's super cool, and uh, well, we'll talk about it later. So check it out. It's uh, orchidate.com. Link in the description. I don't know what the new merch is going to be. I'm excited. It's, it's not cursed. This one I actually think is cool. Oh, well, that's good. You, you guys like, can handle the cursed. Oh, you guys I can like handle the cursed, cursed stuff. stuff. You guys, you I guys like got cursed it. stuff. I know you do. That's why you're the one who handles it. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, you know how. Yeah, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Um, now that we're done being the way we are, mm -hmm. uh, are you ready for your quote, DK? Oh man, the last like three episodes I knew what we were talking about, and now I don't, and I don't want to go back to being wrong. You see, you you are only wrong if you if you get it wrong. You could still get it right. It, well, yeah, but how often does that happen? Well, not often, no, but this one's not too hard. You say that every time, and I still miss it. But it hit me with the quote. Let me, let me, let right, me, let me, right, let's, right. let's do this. Let's do this. All right. Now that I've <clears throat> built up my confidence. Only when you have soared through the morning skies on wings of flame can you understand the hawk. Only when you have fallen, screaming upon those who know they are already dead, can you understand the banshee. Only when you have annihilated those who would oppose you can you truly understand the power of the dragon. And only one who has traveled but ultimately turned away from each of these paths can understand the Autark. Um, yeah, no idea. Um, Are you kidding me? Nope. Hawk, Banshee, Dragon, Autark. I don't, I don't know. When I heard Banshee, I immediately thought Eldar, and that's immediately where my mind went to because, you know, Banshee. But Is is Eldar your final guess? <sighs> yeah, sure. Yeah, it's Eldar. Oh, hey, look at me. Look at you. Look you did at it. Me. I, I did told it. you. Look at me. I told me. you. Let's go. You really didn't get it quite properly, no. But, but what do you it, mean? I said Eldar because Banshee and whatever. Okay, you. Mm, 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 mm. All right, it's I fine. did the thing. You you technically did do the thing. Technically did do the thing as I repeated all of the major keywords in the statement. Yes. So today, well, I guess it depends on what shy titles and the thumbnail is for this episode mm -hmm. because. The episode is, is supposed to be the Eldar Phoenix Lords. The Phoenix Lords. Ooh, we're but, finally doing that, huh? But in order for you to understand the Phoenix Lords, you kind of need to understand the Aspect Warriors. And okay. honestly, the episode is probably mainly just going to be the Aspect Warriors because we plan on doing a different episode for 
the individual named Phoenix Lords. Oh, okay. So today we're doing Aspect Warriors, and then each individual Phoenix Lord gonna get their own episode. So originally it was supposed to be Phoenix Lords, and then the next one will be the named Phoenix Lords, and about each an individual one. There's not okay. enough about just Phoenix Lords to really do a whole episode on. And honestly, you kind of need the backstory for the Aspect Warriors anyway. So okay, it's okay. mainly Aspect Warriors, but like it's kind of the same thing, you know? So, <laughs> you know, the thumbnails don't really need to change. I think Ted's fine because it's still like the Phoenix Lord is just the, the leader of the Aspect Warriors. And we're still going to talk about them anyway. It's just there's going to be a lot of like backstory you're going to have to understand. Okay. Okay. I hey, I I have nothing to do with uh, making the thumbnail. So hey, I'm 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 cool. I'm I'm Ted, As the Ted kids say, I'm I'm all Gucci as the Oh, kids dude. Say. For real, for real on God? No caps detected. Here, oh, my friend. God damn. But no, I'm I think Ted'll be fine with the thumbnail. It's, it's basically to talk about the exact same thing anyway. So, I'll be good. Anywho, <laughs> let's talk about <sighs> You know what makes me upset, DK? Eldar. You know what makes me even more upset? Talking about Eldar. Even more than that? Playing against Eldar. Okay, okay, God, God damn it. Even more than that? Being an Eldar. All right, this, this isn't going to end. Um, actually kind of liking this. Ah, wow. Yeah, you would hate that. You would hate liking the Eldar. Ooh. I I'm I did the research on on the paths of the the various aspect warriors and it's kind of really cool and I kind of uh -huh. like it a lot and I'm mad at myself. Ah, uh, you're going to start an Eldar army, get some aspect warriors, some phoenix lords? Huh? Oh, oh please, just because a few days of research on a, on a topic doesn't make me immediately drop thousands of dollars on an army. Um, especially because the Eldar models are very old. Stares um, longingly at the Night Lords. That was three whole books. Screw you, man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yes, so this actually was really interesting to me. I found these the Aspect Warriors to be pretty cool, and um, it adds a lot. So let's talk about the Eldar now. Okay. The Eldar, the Eldari, the Asuryani, the whole deal. Um, post- their debauchery and then fall to Slanesh. Um, they, after moving to their craft worlds, developed something called the Asuryani Path. Uh, now, this is a like rigid code of conduct and behavior to keep them from falling into the grasp of Slanesh again. Okay. So uh, it's also kind of just known as the path, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And there are actually quite a few different kinds of paths, but overall, it is just the path, the Asuryani path, the Eldar path. Okay, so just the path to avoid uh, drinking that tall glass of Slanesh. It, it's a path to, to keep you away from the possibility of the tall glass of Slanesh. It's like, yeah. you know, it, it's, a, it's a path of discipline. It's a path of how you act and how you behave and, and yeah. how you think. It, it's, you know... You study the blade, all that stuff. Yeah, which every Eldar probably wants. No Eldar wants their soul to go to Slanesh. Follow the path. Follow, Follow the, path. the path. Yep. So there's actually a, a ton of various paths you can go down. You have the Path of Awakening, which allows you to like uh, learn to analyze your surroundings. There's the Path of the Artisan, which is poets, musicians. Uh, there's the Path of the Botanist, the Path of Command, um, there's the path of the dreamer, of grief, the healer, the mariner, the scholar, the seer, uh, the shaper, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's also the path of damnation. Oh, that doesn't sound like a good path to be on. What is it's that, for like criminals and stuff? I think it's more of like, not necessarily a, a bad word. It's more like the path of damnation is when you screw up and you go to the Jukari. Oh, okay. Or so like they believe that the or... they believe that the Jukari have walked the path of damnation. Ah, okay. Um, but the two main paths, the ones that get the most attention, are the path of the seer and the path of the warrior. Now, oh, okay. 
The Path of the Seer is generally your wizard Eldar, your classic magician Eldar, your far seers, mm -hmm. your warlocks, your spirit seers, those as kinds of As the name people. suggests, yeah. As the name suggests. Um, spirit seers like to mess around with the Eldar dead. Uh, warlocks are like kind of just battle mages, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, they also look really cool. Oh, they got uh, that cool helmet. Yeah, they actually have okay helmets. And then, yeah. of course, there are Farseers, which are um, a more way to help uh, govern the craft world, but also kind of see in the future. Mm -hmm. um, Farseers are, what's that old joke? This is, uh, oh, yeah, they got the, uh, they got the uh, spectacles. They got the binoculars. Yeah, the guards with the binoculars. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's definitely interesting. I must say, as someone who really likes uh, old Bushido... You know, like uh, like classic samurai, old school um, eld. You know, I found that it, we people we call the Tao weebs, you know, because Gundam mechs. Cause they are um, Eldar. I guess it determines on what your classification of weeb is, because Eldar are absolutely significantly more Japanese inspired. The the <laughs> out, the garb they wear. The um, like a lot of their units have like big flags on their back, kind of like the samurais did. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They follow like certain paths and certain uh, uh, like uh, methods and methodologies. It's very, very old school Japanese like samurai okay. kind of stuff. Very um, feudal Japan, gotcha. Very feudal Japan. It'll be even more so as it goes. Mm -hmm. The aspect warriors uh, are part of the path of the warrior, so. The Eldar, as a, a race, overall, as a, as a faction, are constantly in war. Because this is the 41st millennium, lol, there's Everybody's only war. war yeah. um, now, it is often divided into smaller specializations, um, and each of these are known as the warrior aspects. They embody some facet of the Eldar god of war, Kratos. Boy. Boy, Cain. Um, so Cain is the Eldar god of war. That's why there's the Avatar of Cain, that whole thing. Uh, is the Avatar of Cain the one that's always getting beat up, or is that, am I thinking of something else? Nope, you got that right. Yes, let's go. That's right, it's the Wharf of 40k Eldars. Yeah, yes, the, yes, the Wharf, of course. Um, I forgot that we used that description mm -hmm, last time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, the, be, being an Eldar, path, like going down the path of the warrior, has you maintaining one of these various specializations of, well, being a warrior. And these specializations are the aspect warriors. Being part of one is it makes you an aspect warrior. So each aspect maintains a shrine, an aspect shrine, which is kind of like a combination of temple and dojo on the craft world itself, where... Oh. They practice and they master their version of the path of the warrior. Okay. Um, there's an interesting philosophy in Eldar culture, which is putting on your war mask. That Ooh. if you go to war, you, you put on your war mask. It, it's like not actually putting on a mask, like a methodology, a mindset. Mm -hmm. um, and you train with it on. And so then when you take off your war mask, you then live in peace with the rest of the craft world. Um, however. Oh, that seems some, so samurai. It's extremely samurai. Oh, man. Some people, however, are not quite able. Because don't forget, like, Eldar are so hyper emotional. Mm -hmm. Their emotions are so strong that some cannot take off their war mask. Oh. And this is what happens when you become an exarch. Which is E-X-A-R-C-H. Exarch. Okay. Um, so like with most other factions, um, like there's always like a sergeant kind of character mm -hmm. when, like on the tabletop. If you have a squad of five, there's always like one guy that's a little bit better. He's has like higher leadership and an extra attack or something. Yeah. That's a sergeant or like a lieutenant or there's just like a higher rank person, you know, mm -hmm. the exarch is the Eldar variant and exarch is someone who has become lost on the path of the warrior. The, the oh. excitement of battle, the training, the power of battle is almost a drug to them because of their 
stimulation in their hyper senses that they have lost the ability to, quote, cast aside their war mask and disassociate themselves mm. between person and warrior. Oh, so they can never live in peace. They just, so, they're just constantly at war and wanting to fight. Oh, they must be a riot at parties. Well, exactly. They, they don't party because they never leave their shrines. Oh. Okay. Also, did China just post a picture of an exarch? Is that is that what they look like? Uh, that looks like the exarch of the Dire Avengers, I believe. Wow. That, is, that is some armor. Um, yeah, so that would be one of them. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, so an exarch is someone who does not leave their temple, except in, in times of high war, uh, uh, high conclave or war. They, they stay in their temple unless it's time to fight, you know? Mm. They live in their temple. Their life is in the temple, in the dojo. The exarch actually, they act as kind of a, a priest and guardian alike for the aspect shrine. They're, they're armorers, they're, they're instructors, they're martial instructors, they're guides, they're, you know, they, they do all that stuff. They're, I don't, I don't know what you would call, like, the, the Shaolin monk that lives at the temple the whole time and trains, like, other people, like, the, the leader, the, oh, sure, a sensei. A sensei, sensei works, sure, yeah. Sure, um, Never leaves, always warlike. They train new Eldar in the path of the warrior, that whole thing. Mm -hmm. So it's not a bad thing to be an exarch, necessarily. Like, that's well, not necessarily a negative title to have. Well, it depends. Being an exarch is a, a form of a leader in some way, but it also does mean that you were unable to cast off your war mask, which yeah, yeah. is a failing of your body, or of your mind, I mean. Um, yeah. Though, it, it, in a sense, it depends, because an exarch will wear armor, that is is super ancient, which also goes in the idea of the sensei wearing old garb mm -hmm. um, with old arcane weaponry. But it is lined with spirit stones because Ooh. the armor's prior of the prior armor's wearer, the previous exarchs, because they don't want to put the spirit stone into the craft world's infinity circuit because they do not want to absorb the essence of someone who cannot remove their war mask. Oh, that's cool. That's such a cool reason to have all this. Oh, that's, I like that a lot. So it's their armor is studded with the old Exarch stones because putting it back in the craft world is considered a bad idea because they can't take off the mask and they don't want to absorb it so oh, they they that's... wear armor studded with these stones so that's why his armor has those stones oh that's so cool uh, i i dig that kind of. a lot I, I i like that a lot yeah well like when you first mentioned exarch i thought it was just like oh these are like outcasts and bad people because like they can't take off their war mask and they're dangerous because they're just war 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 but sounds like they've got more of a teacher sensei role which is cool well, it, it's a little, a little bit. Um, the one that Shy posts is Azerman, and a Phoenix Lord's a little different. Oh, um, but who is, the, who is this evil-looking dude? So that that's fan art, um, but it's a Howling Banshee, and it just was a good example of like ah. you can see the red dots are the studded spirit stones mm -hmm. of the prior wearer for the armor. Yeah, yeah. So kind of kind of adds a little bit there, you know. Yeah. That's dope. Now, Exarchs are cool. So that's the idea of the Exarch. Um, now, moving ahead, we have the Phoenix Lord. Let's go. And the Phoenix Lord is actually the original founder of an Aspect Shrine. Oh. The OG. Oh, so they're a huge deal. So... Somewhat, yeah. So they are the founder of the shrine, and they have transcended past mortality. Oh. Uh, the spirit stone of the original Phoenix Lord is infused into their armor. And when a Phoenix Lord dies in combat, the mightiest exarch of that temple takes their place. They then oh. will don the armor of the Phoenix Lord. But... The f dead Phoenix Lord has the spirit stone on the armor, and whether it's because 
the soul is so old or because the, the power and the, the, the sheer strength of the Phoenix Lord is so high, it will, in a weird way, take over the mind and soul of the new exarch. And oh. I, I would say it's almost like possessing them, but it, it's not like a malicious possession. It's like, it's like a symbiotic. They just kind of remove their personality and they become the new Phoenix Lord. So it's a different body, but the same person. Yeah, it, it's, it's armor wearing a person, not person wearing an armor. Oh, that's a really cool idea. And I imagine whoever the Exarch is probably doesn't mind that because they're an Exarch and then it's like, oh, hey, I can be like, I can transcend and become uh, like this really cool Phoenix Lord that I look up to and it is so much stronger than me. So, I mean, it's probably win-win when a Phoenix Lord does eventually die. Well, also, you gain the Phoenix Lord's extreme power yeah. Which, you know, goes along with their soul because they're so ancient. Mm -hmm. So Phoenix Lords, each and every one of them being the founder of the shrine, is also then the leader of this group of aspect warriors. Naturally. The number one. And despite the fact that they die plenty of times, well, maybe not plenty of times, but they, they can die. Yeah. They will always have the same name because in a sense they're always the same person. Oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Example, the Phoenix Lord for the Howling Banshees is a certain <laughs> known as Jane Czar. <laughs> Why do you say that, Bricky? I don't understand. A little familiar sounding, yeah. Yeah, I, that name does sound a little familiar, but I don't know why you sound so bitter. Well, and I, do, and, uh... I do like the Iron Warriors, but... So bitter is just my life. But um, ah. do you remember what happens to Jane Czar at the end of the third book? Uh, doesn't she get exploded? Uh, Mal um, Malkarian steps on her. Oh, right, right, yeah. Malkarian finishes the job. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, she stabs Talos, and then big explosion. Boom, 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 boom. And then she's, like, dying horribly and crawling away, and then Malkarian, the dreadnought, goes, and is like, oh, look, a bug. Crunch. Crunch. But, uh, of course, the armor is very evidently recovered. The spirit ah. stone is very evidently recovered, so there will still be another Jane Czar. But the killing of a Phoenix Lord is already quite the feat. Mm -hmm. um, but you, you are not killing necessarily Jane Czar. I guess killing Jane Czar would be in finding a way to destroy their spirit stone. Yeah, destroying the spirit stone and, like, melting down the armor or something. Sure, something like that. But, um... Has that ever happened? You know, I'm not quite sure. I don't think so. The Eldar see the future a lot, and they tend to find a way to stop things because they're tricky-dicky assholes. <laughs> yeah. And losing a Phoenix Lord would be a huge deal. An enormous deal. That the would the, be the founder of the Aspect Shrine. You would lose. You would basically lose an Aspect Shrine, wouldn't you? Because if you lost the Phoenix Lord, that shrine would crumble. Not quite. They could keep going in their own way, but you are losing basically one of the the big bad. It's like losing a Primarch. Like it's it's yeah a yeah, very important deal. figurehead. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Aspect Warriors themselves, there are. There's a lot. There's a lot of aspect uh, aspects or, or, or aspect temples. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm not mistaken, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fourteen 12, 13, 14. 14 that I can think of. Whoa. Though I know we will mainly only talk about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, uh, no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So there basically. are 14 Phoenix Lords? There are, I, not quite. Um, there are uh, ten, definitely, that we're aware of. One, two, three, four, five, so six, seven. So do the other four eight, just nine. not have Phoenix Lords? They're either unknown, don't know where they are, or dead. Oh, well, that's that's no good. So, okay, okay so, for example, let's go with, like, Shia mentioned this, for example. Like, there's warp spiders, right? 
Warp so. Spiders is a personal favorite Eldar mini of mine, mainly because I really liked... Well, the minis suck, actually. They're, they're absolutely terrible. <laughs> um, but a favorite Eldar unit, because I loved them in the Dawn of War 2 game. Mm -hmm. um, they also just look really cool. Ooh, yes, they do. So Warp Spiders have a personal teleportation device, and they're able to kind of, like, flicker in, stab you, flicker out, like, zip, 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 zip. They're really, really annoying. The minis are awful because they're so old. Um, they're like 20 years old. <laughs> that is a, that's a mega cannon. That, that, that cannon is bigger than him. It is a death spinner. Ooh, um, I love but that name. <laughs> the, the warp spiders are as interesting as they are. They do not have a Phoenix Lord. They why? themselves, you know, actually, I'm not quite sure. I was going to research why in the next episode when we talk about individual Phoenix Lords, but I, I have no idea. Oh, I guess that makes sense, because you'd have to look up why they have... Yeah, okay. Yeah, the individual Phoenix Lords. But yeah, it's like, yeah. they don't have one, for example. Mm -hmm. um, but the other ones go along the lines of, first things first, you have the Dire Avengers. Mm -hmm. Dire Avengers are kind of your jack-of-all-trades style one. Um, they have advanced weaponry, melee, and shooting. They're just really good at dealing with uh, all kinds of foes. They're a perfect Swiss Army knife. Okay. Except unlike the fact that Eldar do have guardians in general, which are like kind of a militia because everyone needs to fight in the Eldar because there's so few of them. Um, the Dire Avengers are the specialized version. Okay. Okay. Cool. Very they, cool name too. Not, you know. Oh, they're, very, they're pretty neat, but their yeah. Phoenix Lord is a guy named Azerman, which hey. is the guy we were posting earlier. Yes. Welcome back to the conversation, Azerman. So Azerman is kind of a G. Mm -hmm. um, he is the probably the, he is the most famous of all of the Phoenix Lords, mainly because he was the one who helped lead. He, well, he founded the first ever aspect shrine, the Shrine of Azur. He was okay. the first ever shrine, and he was also the one who took the Eldar after the fall and led them away from the hor horrors of Slaanesh. Oh, so he is a very ancient uh, Phoenix Lord. He, he was there at the the creation of Slaanesh, and let's let's not do this anymore, guys. Yeah. Um, oh, well, he actually, I guess he left before the fall of Slaanesh. He was the one who began the craft world to lead them away before yeah. it was destroyed. Yeah. He's kind of the OG guy of, all right, this guy is like, okay, things are going downhill. Things are being a problem. Azerman is the, is the one. He it will, will, is leading us to freedom. Yeah, he's the voice of reason. And that goes along with the Dire Avengers, the, a very jack-of-all-trades, classic-looking group. Okay, cool. Um, the next one we have are the Swooping Hawks. Now, the Swooping Hawks are um, on the tabletop the worst thing ever created. And I hope they burn in the fiery depths of hell. Wow. <laughs> ah, so so these are the ones that started your hatred towards the Eldar on the tabletop and ruined your life for so long, huh? No, those were the planes. Uh, oh. This is a, a more recent hatred. Oh. Um, these swooping hawks have the ability to fly into your face, shoot you, and then fly away to the other side of the map, and you can never shoot them back. They're very annoying. Ooh, that does um, sound annoying. Ooh, they're, they're very cool looking, though. They look baller as hell, and in classic GW fashion, the minis look terrible. Oh, G-dub. A lot oh, of the Eldar minis are very old. G-dub, what are you doing? What are you doing? So, Swooping Hawks are on uh, anti-gravity wings. They oh let God, them fly around. <laughs> They're not very good. <laughs> no. It lets them fly around in the air and move at insanely high speeds. Mm -hmm. You know, the classic Eldar mega fast type of thing. Oh, sure. sure. They love going around. Um, it's kind of interesting because the Swooping Hawk takes their name from the old hunting birds of the Eldar myth which are synonymous with the concept of vengeance and retribution. Okay. So in the ancient times, the Eldar believed that the spirit of a murdered Eldar would pass into a hawk and hover above the killer as a mark of guilt. 
Oh, cool. I I like that little mythology. That's ah, not bad. So they take that concept, but instead of a mark of guilt, they act a bit more on it and murder you. Oof. Because <laughs> All right. you know, they're they're weapons. They're very um, cool. Okay. I I like this. I like this lore. I, like I know, this. it's this pretty cool. good, right? This is dope, yeah. They these were also what uh Lucorifus fought at the end when he fought the flying Eldar. Oh yeah, that would be these guys with the wings. And he yes. ate their soul stones. And he and he ate their soul stones because he liked hearing them scream in his stomach. Oh no. Night a, Lords. Night Lords. Oh, what a I I love Lucorifus. He's a great guy. Yes. Um their Phoenix Lord is a guy known as Baharoth. Um, Baharoth is also known as the cry of the wind and he speaks in a soft wind-like manner the whole time. Ooh, the cry of the wind. Why does it look like he's wearing a gimp suit? Well, because most Eldar armor is kind of kind of skin tight and also it's he's true, in they the want air flying around. And, yeah, it's okay. Okay. He's uh, Baharoth is also uh, a, a unit used by by awful people who should stop speaking <laughs> and and go away because he's so good. <laughs> but his uh, his weapons are like the fury of the tempest and the shining blade. Ooh. You know, pretty pretty classic Eldari stuff. You know, his mini isn't too bad for looking like it's a disgustingly old thing it doesn't look th that bad it has the classic issue that gw has where the scaling is kind of off the limbs yeah. always look too small and the head too big yeah it just it's needs like a... to be like proportioned better yeah um yeah yeah but, but it would look cool. awesome if they reworked it for modern times yeah agreed so the subing hawks after that are done we now have the shining spears Ooh. And the Shining Spears are the rarest and most specialized of them all. They are the idea of the bright and clear virtue of the Eldar. Okay. The, um, uh, oh, damn it, I lost my tab. I had their, their lore. Oh, there we go. Um, the idea is they fight as an invincible weapon like the Strike of Lightning from Cain itself because they move in with extremely fast jet bikes and a gigantic lance. Oh, so they're like the white scars of the of the aspect warriors. They're very very fast and they just come in at god knows how quick and just shank you with a powered out uh Eldar lance. Oh wow, they're like they 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 joust. They're jet bike jousters. Uh yeah, a little bit. Oh, I like that. I don't like the mini, though. Something about the mini looks... I think it's just too much white. It's just white on white with just little bits of blue. Yeah, you could color it up. It's just the, the paint yeah. job. That definitely needs a different coloration on it. But uh, their Phoenix Lord is Drastanta, also known as the Tempest of Starlight. However, they are uh, they are currently missing. Oh, that's no good. Yeah, we don't know where they are right now. So Unfortunate. Shining Spears have a little bit less lore, unfortunately, because of that one. But, you know, we can mm -hmm. chat a bit more about it later on. Yeah. Yep, um, yep. Natural, though, uh, yeah, the, the Shining Spears, you know, they're fast, they're quick. The, the acceptance of the War Mask is all about, like, speed, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, the next sense. one I like a lot. These are the Fire Dragons. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, wow. You like the Fire Dragons? Those are almost like some kind of salamander, right? I actually didn't put that two and two together. Um, <laughs> once you see what they look like, you'll be like, oh, okay, I get it. Okay, okay. Um, fire dragons are really cool. They have the emphasis on, well, you know, the, the dragon. Uh -huh. um, but they have the idea is the pure destruction of their foes. Full-on annihilation. Everything... Uh -huh must die. Every trace of you must be removed. Oh, wow. All right. It is, it is the pure uh, brutality of war and the idea that, that you just just not allowed. You, just, you don't get to live. You don't, you don't get to live. You don't, you you don't, don't get, get to exist. 
You don't get to exist. Oh, I reposted Baharoth. I'm so sorry. Uh, epic embed failure. Laugh at this user. There we go. Mm -hmm. There he is. Whoa! Yeah, he's... Whoa! <laughs> They're very cool. They, they take this, like, savage delight in death. They like wow. it. They, they they enjoy. It. They kind of are just. They just love the idea of burning things to the ground. I mean, makes sense if you're a fire dragon. Um, yeah. Wow, they're cool. They're really cool. They have uh, insanely good weapons called like the dragon fusion gun and something called the fire <laughs> pike. Um, they have flamers as well and all that. But their phoenix lord is this guy named Fugin, and mm. Fugin. It looks like a baller. Yeah? Yeah. Whoa! He Whoa. looks so cool, dude. He looks like he would fall to corn immediately. Or Kane. Ah-ha-ha-ha. ha 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 Indeed. No, Shy, you gotta show me the mini. Now God, that you've said it, so... you have to show it to me. It's so much worse, dude. I want to so, see it. It's I so see it. bad. You, you, oh. can't, you can't hit me with the, I'm not going to show you the mini because it's so embarrassing, and then not let me see it. Show him the mini, Shy. <laughs> oh, man, that's bad. <laughs> oh, my God. What did they do to my boy? I know. Fugit's so Look cool, too. what they too. did to my boy. They massacred him. Oh, wow. That's bad. Oh. It's it's so unfortunate, too, because Fugin is a, is a total G. He's like a pure force of destruction. Mm -hmm. Just this, this never-ending power. He's, he's got so much... So much strength going to hell on him that like I could have a whole a whole like twenty minutes talking about him that I would in probably the next episode that we talk about them. Mm -hmm. um, but he is equipped with something called the Seer Song, which for for my tabletop players is a one shot strength ten AP four D six plus four sh damage gun, which is like like that can do that can do equivalent damage to a Tau railgun. Whoa! Um, it, it's just like this one single lance that just melts everything, and he I'm has an enormous. That's axe. the giant gun that he's carrying. It, it might be the giant gun that he's carrying. He also has a, the axe called the fire axe, which is a little bit more boring sounding, but it yeah. also does absolutely bop. <laughs> uh, so if you want to run him in tabletop, you have to run this. Der derpy looking thing or you like convert him or something but yeah. oh man that's so bad he's he's known as the burning lance oh man what a and, what a garbage mini uh when the shrine of azur was eventually destroyed they thought that he he disappeared for centuries but he reappeared during a battle of this planet called oh dear god haran shamash which is, quote, <laughs> the world of blood and tears. Whoa, okay. And uh, he came back. He's uh, a little bit shopping at Hot Topic. A little bit, a little bit. He's pretty cool, though. Very um, cool. The next one that I had actually never heard about until today are the Shadow Specters. Ooh. Um, they're apparently more recently rediscovered, and you can kind of think of them like a mixture of swooping hawks and fire dragons. Uh, and a little oh. bit Dark Reapers, actually. They're highly mobile, anti-infantry firepower that shoot from, like, a really, really long range and can't be seen well. Whoa, they're very cool looking. Yeah, they, they, I think their design is a, is a bit better than most. They, they're a lot more regal, but, like, they're very... Yeah. They, no, no, they look like, they look like Wisp. Warframe. They look like Wisp. Oh, yeah, they do look like Wisp. They don't have well, nearly so the, the same size of the ass, but you know. I was it's gonna okay. say, yeah, you, you need a you need a much bigger, you need more junk in that trunk. There needs to be way more junk in the trunk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You but, need a much bigger. Wow, that's cool. I love they them. Look, 
They look really cool, but they are unfortunately Forge World only, which is why they don't ever see them. Yeah. Oh, boo. Classic, classic G does with that one. But uh, their actual Phoenix Lord is called Irithyll, or the Shade of Twilight, uh, which, uh, again, um, Forge World stuff. So there's not a whole lot on them, at least uh, in terms of what I've got for you today. They're so cool, though. They're easily the coolest one we've seen today. Easily. I I think I would agree with you. Yeah. I think I would agree with you. They look really, really cool. So dope. Oh, my God. So the next one, I, I'm always unsure how if I like these guys or not because I think they look awesome, but I think their paint color, their color scheme is what throws me off. Um, okay. These are the striking scorpions. Oh, I've seen some striking scorpions before. Striking scorpions are the the dedicated speed and melee prowess kind of people. They're mm -hmm. they're incredibly fast. They're sneaky. They attack without warning. They just they just bounce out of nowhere and then rip you apart and then fade away. Just like a scorpion. Like a scorpion. They they sting like a scorpion. Quick and 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 uh, and powerful. Dancing in and out of of fights. Mm -hmm. Um. It's the green that gets me. I, I don't love the green. Really? Because in the in the in that picture that Chai posted, they look great. That is the best picture of them, in my opinion. Yeah. And being that you're a big salamanders guy, I figured the green wouldn't necessarily upset you. I don't like the green in salamanders. I think the green is tacky. Thanks. So. Ooh. Yeah, mini's terrible, of course, naturally. Yikes. Yeah, that green, not great. Um, they are Though the, the whole idea of them is the hunt, right? Using mm -hmm. stealth, shadow, cloaking in, cloaking out, bouncing back and forth. Um, they're they're really really cool overall in their use uh, case. They're of course like most Eldar, a little bit squishy, but they can run, come in and just rip people up. They uh, do. Yeah, they, they do, do the look like Predator hair, a little bit. Do they use uh, poison at all? Since they're striking scorpions. Uh, you know that actually. Um, let's see. They have oh, their or something? Scorpion OX Chainsaw, which is a vicious blade with diamond tooth edges that mangle and tear flesh. Yeah. It allows them to make use of physical strength, etc. Scorpion's Claw is a gauntlet that contains a built-in shirk and catapult weapon is sheathed in a power field that enables the wielder to tear through in the thickest battle plate. Oh, I guess not. Cool. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I guess they're I guess their little scorpion claws the closest thing you get to, like, the scorpion tail just... They're, they're just really sharp, I guess, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, their Phoenix Lord is a guy named Karandros. Uh, and this is when the lore gets really fascinating for okay. them. So Karandros was not the original uh, Phoenix Lord for Striking Scorpions. Oh, is this an example of um, of someone donning the armor and sort of taking over? Not quite. Oh. So the original one was a guy known as Ar Archa, Archa, or the father of scorpions. Get that phlegm um, out. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> they are the only Phoenix Lord to have ever completely been lost to the Eldar and their shrine when their murderous nature, their constant like, lo like donning the war mask, eventually overwhelmed them and led them to become, uh, have the consumption of their soul by chaos. This oh, had really? them, kind of, sort of, to chaos. Um, more so going down the path of damnation, where they became a life-destroying monster like the Jukari were. Oh. So, they walked the path of damnation and eventually fled to the city of Kamaran where they became the first ever Drukari Incubi Hierarch, which, oh. if you might, if this might sound familiar, <clears throat> they were, as the first uh, uh, Incubi, they are, and, or they changed their name to none other than Drizar. Oh, Drizar with the Drizip! With the Drizip. Oh, that's how Drizar became a thing? That is Drizar. Drizar is a fallen Phoenix Lord who walked the path of damnation and eventually 
founded the Incubi Temple in Kamara. Oh, dope. So uh, the Striking Scorpions take this as a point of shame and uh, really aren't a big fan of the, the Jukari. Oh, well, they don't like the Jukari to begin with, but, you know, Especially sometimes... Especially the Incubi, I assume. Yeah, sometimes, you know, the Jukari and the Eldar work together for a common goal, but you're, you're going to be hard-pressed to get the, the Striking Scorpions to work with the Incubi. <laughs> I am actually surprised that the striking scorpions didn't just fall apart after learning that, like, oh yeah, our uh, our phoenix lord, ah, he fell to the Drakari and started a Drakari temple. Like that's that seems like a backbreaking blow. Uh, it, it's, I mean, it's a point of great shame, especially to the Eldar with their heightened uh, senses and their whole mm -hmm. thing like that. Um, but so what happened? To, so like, does because obviously he took his armor with him, I assume. So is there basically no Phoenix Lord anymore for the Striking Scorpions, and they just have an Exarch as their head honcho? Um, so the idea that like the original founder of the of the temple, the Phoenix Lord, like them going away is, is definitely a blow, but it's it's not like. It's not like it's actually the thing that makes a Phoenix Lord a Phoenix Lord. A Phoenix Lord is just a really, really powerful Eldar warrior who originally had like the founding type thing, but it becomes even more powerful because of how old and powerful their spirit stone is. The new Phoenix Lord of the Striking Scorpions is just someone who took up the mantle of the position and has continued to do so for a while, which is Karandras. Oh, okay. So it's like, yeah, it, it sucks that Drazar, or whatever their original name was, is no longer the the main founder of it. But it's not like the requirement it's like to it's be the a end phoenix. Of the aspect warriors, if you yeah. use the phoenix lord, okay. It's not the requirement of the aspect war of the phoenix lord to be the founder. It's the requirement to be the leader of the temple, and oh, be the okay. strongest. I I I guess I kind of figured it was almost like um, they were like the pillar of that aspect and like without them it's like well, what do we do our leader's gone i don't know what to do also that's a really really sick picture of that striking scorpion i'm assuming that's Karandros or whatever yep he's got the you can see like he's got some of the things on the top of his head looks like a little scorpion mm -hmm. hat i think was it Karandros one of the minis that i made you and kirioth try and guess i think so it? i think so yeah. yes and Kirioth was mad because he's like, oh, it's a striking scorpion, but it's a specific one, and you're a bastard, and yeah. Yeah, the classic. Yeah. The next one we have are the Dark Reapers. <laughs> now, this should be Mass more effect. than familiar to you. Me? Dark oh, I can't under... Well, why is that, Bricky? Because you you know their Phoenix Lord very well. Old Mugen Ra, Maugen Ra. M Maugen Ra, the Dark mm. Reapers, the, the aspect of death. They ah, wear the visage so cool. of death on their on their face. They've got really high powered, pretty strong weaponry. They're kind of like a heavy weapons group, but the art of the dark and malefic powers of um the Eldar Eldar God of, God of War, Cain. Cain's heart like I don't know, Harvesting of Souls. Well, Harvester of Souls is the name of Malgan Ra's thing, but mm -hmm. to uh, to go with the the aspect of Cain, the aspect of, of death. Speaking um, of hot topic, right? Yeah. The, the miniature is new. Yeah, this is actually a remade version of the mini, um, but I always think they paint the, the, paint the helmet kind of funny. It looks yeah, a little bit like... I was going to say, uh, it looks good, but that mask looks goofy. I do not like it. They remind me of um, uh, De Los Mertos. Ah. A little uh, bit? A little bit. It just, I don't know, something about it just looks wrong. Like, it just looks, it something about the way the mouth is painted on makes it look comical to me. It is it is a little bit weird. I think they need to do, add either more or less. Um, I almost feel like just blank white faces would be scarier. Like Slender Man I looking agree. thing? Yeah. I think if it was just blank, it would look a lot better. 
But the Dark Reapers, of course, as we know, their Phoenix Lord is Maugen Ra. Um, Maugen Ra, the, the baller himself. His new, his old mini was pretty cool. His new one, oh, man. His, his new one looks absolutely fantastic. Oh, it's incredible. It's amazing. The uh, interesting thing is that the aspect there can be traced to an old craft world in the fall of the Eldar, birth of Slanesh, etc. Uh, the craft world Altansar rode the psychic shockwaves out that destroyed the realms from Slanesh and was eventually caught in a gravity well in the Eye of Terror. And it did their best to fight against chaos, but was unable to escape it. And within 500 years, the craft world was swallowed by the warp. And nothing oh. remained of the craft world except for Maugen Ra, the wow. mightiest exarch of the shrine, and the Dark Reapers representing Cain's role as a destroyer. Man, Shy posted his new mini again, and oh my god, that's so cool. I mean, he's the grim fucking Reaper. Like, it's it, so edgy, but it's just yeah. so good. It's oh, it's man. so good. He's he's the Grim Reaper for God's he's sake. He's literally the Grim Reaper. Yeah, with the yeah. scythe and everything. Oh, it's so cool. I, I have I have one quote of him, and it is: "War is my master, death is my mistress." So yeah, edgy is all hell, but come on, it's pretty great. Oh, it's so great. Yeah, Scythe Gun is a vibe shot. That is Scythe cool. Gun. <laughs> it's um, a, it looks like a Scythe Sniper. A little bit. So hmm. um, there are two left I have. Uh, one I'll skimp over pretty quickly, which is the Eagle Pilots. Uh, Eagle Pilots don't have a whole lot on them. They're basically aspect warriors that follow the uh, path of the Phoenix Lord, Amon Haracht, which has a grand total of two sentences on the wiki entirely. Oh. Um, just there's not a whole lot going on there. It is a aspect uh, for pilots. They, they fly Nightwing interceptors and fancy variations of planes. Oh, okay. Cool. It, it is one page long. It is, there's not a whole lot on this. It's basically just... They're pilots. The aspect warriors for pilots. Yes. Okay. Um, the last one, though, is the Howling Banshees. Ah ha The Howling Banshees. We know we know a little about the Howling Banshees. We know plenty about the Howling Banshees. <laughs> yes, all, we do. All female only aspect warrior for highly mobile melee combat mm -hmm. and Kane's ability to instill instill fear into their foes. Um, Shai the, said she has an entire folder of Howling Banshees. What does that mean? Yo, same here, Shy. Let's go. <laughs> Hell yeah. You you missed the conversation Shy and I were having, but I can't really, I guess I can't really judge you guys for having Howling Banshee uh, folders. I have many of folders. Yes, many for Hello, who is that? Yo, even I'm okay with that one. Bitch ripped Let's as hell. Let's go. Look Let's at those. Let's go. Let's look at those abs. Look at Man. those abs. Just cut my face all over those abs. Like a cheese grater. Like a cheese grater until it's a fine dust. Until it looks blank and white like the Dark Reaper's face. Mm-mm-mm. mm, -mm, -mm. mm, -mm. All right. Um, so Banshees are obviously a quick high speed melee troop uh but they're instead of like the um striking scorpions that are meant to be like kind of fast jump in jump out hunter killers mm -hmm. the idea of the banshee is to massively debilitate the enemy they wear their specialized banshee mask which is a constantly screaming mask and what it does is it allows them to oh it also has like this long mane of hair on the top which has this psionic amplifier that magnify their screams to like ear piercing levels and kind of just turns your mind into jelly. Your nervous system starts to kind of break down when you have terror and, and momentary paralysis. Like it, it's, a, it's like if someone were to just flashbang you mentally for a long while. Constantly. You, 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 yeah, constantly. You just can't undo it. So. 
They charge Man. a group of, like, a squad of guardsmen. The guardsmen are just, like, covering their ears, and they just can't move, and they just get sliced up like easy pickings. Yeah, unless unless you're space marines, it sounds like it's nearly impossible to deal with howling banshees. Like, they are just so sensory overload. I mean, even, you know, they fought them a even, lot in the Night Lord books, and they were like, I can't take this damn screaming. <laughs> yeah. I can't aim properly. But at least at least they were able to sort of fight a little bit. It sounds like if you're anything less than a space marine, you're you just you, you're not going to do anything. You're just going to be totally like debilitated and just you're going to go insane just oh, from being yeah. around them. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, a squad of guardsmen are not going to be able to deal with the the all female conglom- conglomerate that has decided to spend their entire life honing how good they can shriek. Yeah, pretty much. Like, I mean, oof, man, they could cut through humans. Like, oh, they cut through people in game too. They they shred. Also, they do. They did get brand new minis. Ooh, they are the most yeah. recent kit. They look very good. Those are pretty solid. Yeah. I like those. They they look What's... like what most should look like, which is a a um, modern day revitalization of the old school mini. What's going on with that one in the middle? It looks like it's got a gas mask on top of its mask. Or is that supposed to be... Oh, no, wait. That's a spirit stone, isn't it? That's a helmet, yeah. And a oh. spirit stone. Because don't forget, the, the sergeants are exarchs. They have the uh, spirit stone studded armor. Oh, yeah. It's just... It's weird having the helmet on top of the mask. Well, no, I guess it's not that weird. Okay. Whatever looked, you say. I don't know why. It looked funny to me. Well... Regardless, uh, the idea mm. is that when the Banshee units uh, charge something, the people they charge can't fight until they've fought, basically, because they're so debilitated. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it, it's incredibly hard to deal with a Banshee squad un- unless you shoot them down first. Because once they're yeah. on you, oh, no. It's over. It's yeah. over. And then, of course, the Phoenix Lord for the Howling Banshees is Jane Zar herself mm-hmm. with her crazy spinning glaive known as the silent death and the blade of destruction which is uh pretty much a naginata if i'm not if i'm not mistaken it looks like one cool which i do love myself a naginata also new mini to go along with them yeah sure sure naginata very cool looks like she's also got like a shuriken uh that's the that's the silent death uh throwing weapon she has Mm, love it Yep, they're they're all really cool. Um, Jane Zar and the Howling Banshees are a great staple. Very good on the tabletop. Well, Jane Zar is okay, but the Howling Banshees are great on the tabletop. They cut through everything, <laughs> everything. Um, and yeah, uh, her mask is called Terror's Lament, which is Ooh. a great, great name. Um, there's a couple other aspect warrior shrines. There are the Crimson Hunters, which are like high level uh, planes. There's the Crystal Dragons, the Slicing Orbs of Xandros, and the Ebon Talons. But uh, all of them don't seem to have much on them. And so I kind of scooted really. past them because I think yeah. only the Crimson Hunters are the only thing you could even run on the tabletop, which are just better planes, basically. Cool. Cool. As opposed to normal planes, it's like you want you want regular planes or do you want crimson hunter planes? Ooh, it's like well, I guess I'll play. I guess I'll do a crimson hunter plane, I suppose. So your favorite is the fire dragons, I would assume. Um, they're pretty cool. I, I must say, I do like the um, dark reapers and the banshees actually quite a bit. I do think the banshees are really really cool. Yeah, the howling banshees are. so so dope. So I I would go with the Howling Banshees or uh what were the Specters the the Shadow Specters what were they called? Yeah, Shadow Specters are really cool. I they're not there's not enough on them for me to call them my favorite, but they look super dope. So dope. But yeah, I guess I'd go with the Howling Banshees too, or the Dark Reapers because Malgan Ra. Malgan Ra is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I, I really do like the Fire Dragon. Though I, if they had a better mini and Fugan got a better mini, I might go there with them because <laughs> <Poor> Fugan <laughs> in game they're kind of hilarious how you can run them because you can basically just bring them out 
and be like, oh, hey, look, there's a vehicle. Die. <laughs> Die a horrible, horrible death. Burn because... alive inside your tank. Because tanks don't have a bottom, so the fire can get in. Right, Shai? Oh, right. The new Rogaldorn tank. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, uh, mm-hmm. it's shenanigans. Yeah. But that's... I do... I do really like the fire dragons. Mm-hmm. They are, they're really cool. Um, I, I think they're just a, an absolute blast. And uh, and yeah, a blast. Huh? And Fugin is just super fun. I would love oh, to run blast. Fugin on tabletop so I can just be like, hey, here's my little tiny stubby guy that has a railgun shot, basically. Prepare yourself. You should do it. No, because that means I have to buy an Eldar army. Do it. I've only, I have bought. Jane Zar and the Howling Banshees. I ah, see you're already there. You're so close. Yeah, I actually snipped their bodies apart and uh, chained them to my <laughs> Night Lord tanks. <laughs> did you really? I actually did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant! Brilliant! Uh, I, know, I know who I am. <laughs> I know exactly I mean, the kind of person I am. That is, that is very on brand. Um... Yeah. Oh, Shy said, wouldn't that make it more satisfying if you if you have your twenty year old goofy minis absolutely wrecking some assholes brand new Primaris Marines? No, because then you're like because <laughs> no. then because then you're um the person with the Primaris Marines is like, that's fine, you know, I don't care if I lose. I have these awesome new pretty minis that I painted up and look great. In yeah, fact, I would lost. argue the guy the guy who runs the crappy minis and beats everyone is more of a that guy than anything. Because he's like, no, I run Fugin because he's good. And because he goes, he's really good. He looks like shit, but he's so powerful. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I guess that does kind of give off that guy energy, doesn't it? A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Aspects are great. Aspect Dude, Warriors they're so are, cool. They're so cool. I'm so mad at how cool they are. Every time we do an episode on the Eldar, I end up liking them more. Like they just they they have so much cool stuff. I don't know How if I can go, you not I go, like them. I don't know if I go that far, but I do think the aspect warriors are extremely cool. Uh, I'm excited about the Phoenix Lord episode now, where we specifically talk about each one of them in detail. I'm I I'm I am I enjoy this. This is good eating. It's going to be a little bit difficult on some of the Phoenix Lords. Like I'm pretty sure we can have an entire goddamn episode on Azerman. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and probably there won't be as, as much lore probably on like Fugin, um, or Jane Czar, but I'm pretty sure like Baharoth, I think has a ton of lore. Like it, it, they're a little bit iffy, uh, but we'll find out. I haven't gone far enough into the uh, looking, so we'll see how it goes. Um, All but, right. but I, I may, I may be an Eldar, an elf hater, but yeah, James Workshop, please fix these. They, they're, this is the cool part of Eldar. Please update yeah. them, god damn it. Yeah, they the from the minis I've seen, they really desperately need an update. And they're so cool. Like I I don't know how much money you'd make off of updated Eldar. I have to believe there are enough Eldar fans and Eldar players out there that you would make a bu- 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 bank. Bu- 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 bank. Bu- 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 bucks. Bu- 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 blam. Yeah, update yeah, you should Eldar are a decently popular enough army. I really do think that they need to get the update. Yeah, run, run, you know, you can run another set of uh, space marines, and then once you've made a hell of profit off of that, just run some Eldar. So even if it does tank a little bit, so what? You made all your money off the space marines. Who cares? Update them. The deed is done. Mm. 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 All right, everybody. That's it for us today. Go out there and and get yourself. Well, no, don't buy the uh, eggs. Buy the Eldar. Yeah. No, 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 don't. Buy the eggs. No, they look bad. Play, Wait for them to get updated. Buy Fugin immediately. Play Fugin at all of the tournaments. Be the stubby little guy and destroy worlds. Mm-hmm.